Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about ketosis and constipation. Now, I wish it was uh, real cut and dry that it would always be this one thing, but it's, it's usually a complex thing that could involve multiple things. So I'm just going to go through uh, some of the scenarios that, that come up. Most people think it's a lack of fiber that causes constipation. That is absolutely not true. Um, in fact, a lot of the fiber that people consume, even from vegetables, uh, it's insoluble, which means it's not digesting. So adding more will actually constipate you more. So if you look at what you did before uh, starting this plan and after, we want to look at the big changes and we want to evaluate each change. And I'm not talking about constipation you had before doing ketosis. That's a whole different situation, which involves probiotics and a bunch of other stuff. Um, I'm talking about after the ketogenic diet, you started getting constipation. What do you do? What do you look at? So we're gonna look at um, the change in vegetable fibers, okay? The microbes live on fiber. They will get overwhelmed easily if you have not adapted these microbes to this new way of eating. So just like keto adaptation, you have to look at the adaptation of the microbes that have to evolve and grow to digest all these fibers because if they can't digest the fibers, you're gonna have this, <laughs> all this cruciferous or kale shake and you're gonna bloat, you're gonna get gas, if that's happening, then you're going to have to change the vegetables, that's simple, to maybe something like, um, um, like just lettuce, spinach, other types of vegetables, uh, romaine lettuce, something like that uh, to get your greens. So just definitely look at that. Other people have an issue with certain types of cruciferous, like myself, I can't eat broccoli, it tears me up, it will constipate me. Uh, I can do lots of cabbage, other people cannot do cabbage, they can do broccoli. So you're gonna to have to test it out. I also recommend fermented vegetables simply because those are much easier to break down and uh, pickles are good, sauerkraut, kimchi, very, very good. Um, okay, so we have that and then we also have, you know, just the fat that you're eating and the protein. In most cases, those two uh, types of macros are easier to digest than uh, the vegetable carbohydrates, believe it or not. But it could be that you're doing too much fat that's plugging up the gallbladder and that is backing you up. So if we look at just the whole digestive system, you have the ability to digest fats, proteins, carbohydrates, or, or even fiber, and just you wanna just check each one of those. So, so things to adjust are the vegetable, the type of vegetable, uh, maybe too much fat. And the other thing is that um, when you start a ketogenic diet, you will sometimes lose a lot of water weight, in the process lose a lot of electrolytes. So that's why I always like to add that back in there. I highly recommend the electrolyte powder that I use because it has a thousand milligrams of potassium, it has magnesium, it has all the electrolytes, it has trace minerals, no sugar. Um, that usually will help the elimination greatly. So even potassium in general is the electrolyte to help um, with muscle cramps, and colon uh, cramping or uh, stagnant colon. So uh, when you have more potassium, it helps facilitate elimination as well as magnesium. Those two are electrolytes that are really important in elimination. On a very rare occasion, I may have the person drink more water, but typically that's very rare. That's not usually the cause, but it's something to look at. If you're eating, drinking no water, you know that could be a situation, but it's rare. Um, the other thing is that if you're doing too many nuts, or even some seeds, which it's usually nuts or peanut butter. Um, typically, if you're doing raw nuts, you're doing you're getting enzyme inhibitors, which means that that's going to stop your digestion right there. That could be causing the constipation. So an experiment would be to germinate the nuts, soak them overnight, dry them out in the oven under lower temperatures, and then consume them. And you may find that that solves the whole problem. The other thing is just to cut out the nuts for a couple days and see if that gets rid of the constipation, because that could block, and it also has insoluble fibers. So you got the combination of enzyme inhibitors and then you just can't digest the nuts because of the enzyme inhibitors. Um, and then um, as far as dairy goes, so quite a few people are, have allergies to milk sugar lactose. Okay, so if that's the situation and you're bloating or you're not digesting this cheese that you're consuming, we gotta look at that as well. So just kind of experiment if you have some dairy and you get gas or bloating, then we need to eliminate that at this time. There are types of dairy that are low on lactose. For example, lactose-free 
um, cheese, uh, lactose. Usually cheese has very low amounts of lactose because the microbes consume that sugar and then they, they basically you get more of a protein than you would get if you had actual milk or yogurt. Uh, casein is the protein in dairy, which um, that's really high in hard cheeses and it's also um, lower in soft cheeses. It's higher in Greek yogurt. So, you know, if you're consuming too much of that protein, that could back pe people up as well, back you up. So you might want to try, uh, try uh, goat's cheese or sheep cheese, which people can digest that much better than actually uh, cheese from cows. So you might want to try that as well. So these are just things to look at in your um, search to find a solution for constipation. Put your comments below. Hi guys. Hey, listen, I created a pretty amazing evaluation quiz down below that actually analyzes your symptoms to find the cause, the root cause of all of your symptoms, the most likely cause. So take the quiz now and we'll send you a report.